There's a very strong scientific consensus that CO2 levels in the atmosphere are increasing due at least in part to the production of fossil fuels. And because of that, we're seeing increases in atmospheric CO2 from post-industrial to current times, and we expect CO2 levels to continue to rise. These hoop houses are containing ragweed plants from three different locations, New York, Vermont, and Massachusetts. And the hoop houses are set to different levels of CO2, ambient, intermediate, and elevated, or 400, 600, and 800 parts per million. So right now we're actually in an atmosphere that's roughly 400 parts per million on average of CO2. Um, that is up from post-industrial levels. And what we predict with models is into the future we'll see upwards of 750 or even 800 parts per million in the atmosphere over the next century, or maybe even sooner. So what that means for pollen production, based on the data we have so far, is that this particular plant, ragweed, actually allocates a lot of the extra CO2 that it uses during photosynthesis into reproduction. And as a result, there's a lot more pollen being produced by individual plants. And what that means for allergy sufferers is that there is likely to be not only more pollen in the atmosphere produced by, by the plants themselves, but also a longer pollen season. And that's, per, that's due in part to the elevated CO2 as well as increasing temperatures, which gives them a longer growing season. And then finally, we're actually looking at measuring the potency of this pollen. In other words, how concentrated is that AMBA1 protein? Um, that's the thing that makes you sneeze. So right here we have um, some flags that are delineating a plot where we have ragweed and we have um, 24 different populations going across the state of Massachusetts where we have similar plots like this set up um, along an urban to rural gradient from Boston to the Berkshires. Within these plots we're getting some more detailed population level information on the, um, the potency, the production and the timing of um, ragweed pollen and our collaborators at UMass will analyze the pollen and be able to see how much of the allergenic protein in it is in the pollen. So this is chamber number six. This number here corresponds to its identification and this number here corresponds to the CO2 level that it's being maintained at. So this, cha this particular chamber is set at 600 parts per million. And that's what the six stands for. So come on inside. This is Lynn and Laura over here. Lynn and Laura are undergraduates working here in our summer program this summer, and they are measuring ragweed in the pots. Hi, I'm Laura. I'm Lynn. And we're measuring the growth of ragweed. We're measuring the height and then the longest leaf from populations from three different states, like this one's from New York, this one's from Massachusetts, and then this one from Vermont. And I'm doing a similar study out in the fields and just focusing on Massachusetts. So CO2 is a little bit heavier than oxygen, and we're measuring CO2 down here at the level of the plants. The plants, of course, are using CO2 for photosynthesis. And the reason that we're looking at plants from different states, New York, Massachusetts, and Vermont, is because that actually represents an existing climatological gradient. So plants that are coming from New York actually experience in their home environments higher CO2 levels, a more urban environment, and a warmer environment. Massachusetts is somewhere in the middle, and the Vermont populations, of course, come from a more rural, lower CO2, and cooler environment. So it's actually the flower of the ragweed plant that causes the hay fever problem. The flower produces pollen, and the pollen itself produces a protein called the AMBA1 protein. But that's also a protein that our body recognizes as a foreign entity and rejects it, and that's what causes a lot of people to sneeze. So some plants are actually pollinated by animals like bees and birds, bats and other things that move around pollen um, with, when they are visiting flowers. Ragweed is one of the plant species, the many plant species that's actually um, pollinated by wind. And ragweed pollen is very, very fine. It's kind of like a dust and the fact that it flies around in the wind and creates these pollen clouds is what creates problems for allergy sufferers. Over time, the predicted increases in CO2 are likely to result in worsening of allergies because pollen will probably become more abundant and possibly even more potent. However, researchers are predicting that not all ragweed populations are alike. Some will respond with changes in timing, others with more potency, and so on. So knowing how populations differ from one another in their responsiveness to climate change is important for predicting future allergy hotspots. 
So this project not only helps us understand climate change effects on plant species and pollen production, but it also really has an important link to the public health sector.